Hello everyone, today's topic is soil science. This is an incredibly important when you're studying plant science because the health of the soil determines the health of the plant. Today we're going to cover the importance of soil, the components of soil, and the functions of soil. In 2015, the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organizations of the United Nations, named 2015 the International Year of Soils. The FAO and a lot of different organizations around the world have celebrated soils and promoted the educations of soils because they know that the health of soils determines the health and the productivity of our agriculture and therefore the production of food in our world. Thanks to the investment of soil education, there's a lot of different events to promote the understandings of soils. A lot of these events have been recorded and are available on YouTube or other venues. The FAO also has amazing resources for you to learn about soils. You'll see a link to the FAO website regarding soils in this description of this video. So why has the FAO and other organizations invested so much in soil? What is all the hype about soil? That's what we're going to talk about today. To go along with this video, there are six questions that you are asked to answer on your own or with your partner. They can be found on the Reaching Roots website or in the description below. You may not know the answers to these questions, but do your best. First question is, what is soil? And why do we care about soil? Next, why do soil scientists, scientists who study soil, hate the D word? Yes, the four letter derogatory word used for soil, dirt. Why do soil scientists hate that? I hope that you thought of a great definition for soil. Here's a definition of soil that I have. The mixture of minerals, organic matter, and water that serves as a natural medium for the growth of land plants. What does that really mean? Well, soil is a nutrient reservoir, meaning that inside soil, there's nutrients that plants need to grow. Without these nutrients, plants wouldn't be able to build the building blocks of life, and therefore we wouldn't be able to eat those plants to get nutrition. Soil serves as a place where we produce food and fiber ensuring food security, making sure that everyone has enough food to eat, and the productions of fiber, such as cotton, which is incredibly important for the clothes that we wear and our economy. Soil is also a very valuable natural resource. A lot of people say they're not making any more land, which is true. Soil is sold as a commodity, either by the land that has that soil on it, or the soil is sold separately to different people so that they can could put that soil on their land to improve the quality of their land. Inside the soil, there's more than just nutrients. There's also many different organisms that help plants grow and can do very useful things for us. For instance, some organisms that are found or housed in soil have very important uses in medicine, such as penicillin, a very important antibiotic. Organisms like penicillin come from the soil. So ensuring soil health is important for preserving the biodiversity of those organisms that may be important for solving diseases in the future. Soil also acts as a carbon bank, holding a lot of carbon so that it does not get released to the atmosphere, which can cause greenhouse gas problems and the addition to our planet warming. Soil is also an environmental filter meaning that as water trickles down through soil, it becomes clean. So then it can be used as drinking water, like the water that we get from wells, or that water will trickle through land plants and um, moss bogs, and then it will get to a river and be cleaner after it's gone through that vegetation and also soil. So it's very important for water to go through soil to be filtered. Now that we've covered the importance of soil, let's dump out a bucket and see what's inside. If you dump out a bucket, what you'll find inside that soil is important. There's inorganic components, which are minerals. The main minerals that are found in soil are clay, silt, and sand. 
You'll also find air and water. We'll talk about why air and water is important in the future. There's also organic matter, which includes decayed plant material and microorganisms. Let's look at a pie chart and see how much of each is in soil on average. On average, you need 25% of the space of soil to be water. Plants need that water to grow. 25% of the space needs to be air. And that's incredibly important for the roots to cellular respiration. And the other components is minerals. These minerals house the nutrients of the soil. And a small percentage, somewhere around 5%, is organic matter, which plays critical roles and also includes the microorganisms that help plants grow. Now you have the tools needed to answer question 3 on your sheet. What is soil made up of? Label the pie chart. Question number four. Draw the three main mineral components of soil. Do your best to draw to scale. You just learned that the three main mineral components are clay, sand, and silt. Draw them. Which one do you think is the biggest? Which one do you think is the smallest? Have you ever played with sand in a sandbox? or clay when making a clay pot? These experiences might help you answer that question. Please pause the video, brainstorm, and draw these. Now it's time to see if you're correct in how large you think sand, silt, and clay are. If you said sand was the largest, you're correct. You can tell this because when you put sand in your fingers, it's very gritty. You can see, feel the large particles. Silt is much smaller and clay is tiny. That's why we use clay to build pots because the particles are so small they can stick together and form pottery. The amount of sand, silt, and clay that is in soil determine what type of soil it is. This is the graph that we use for deciding the soil texture. On each side of this triangle, there's the percent of each mineral component, percent of silt, percent of sand, and percent of clay. If you know these percentages, you can determine which soil you have in your yard. Is it a clay soil, a silt loam soil, a silt soil, a sandy soil? Which one do you have? We'll learn about how to do this in part two of the soil science lecture. Soil structure is also very important. Sometimes soil can be in huge, massive blobs, and that can make it hard for roots to penetrate that soil to grow down to get more water and nutrients. There's different soil structures that you see here, and different plants are more tolerant to growing in different soil structures. This is called a soil profile. If you dug deep into the soil, you can see that there's different layers. The top is called the O layer, or the organic layer, and then we have zone A, B, and C. Now let's answer question number five. What else is in the soil, and what do they do for the plant? Pause the video and answer this question on your own or with your partner. I hope that you realize that soil is alive. Soil is more than just the sand, silt, and clay that makes it up. It also has many different organisms that find the soil as their home and also do very important ecological processes in the soil. There are many macro or large organisms that live in the soil and many microorganisms that live in the soil. These small microorganisms that live in the soil play critical roles in promoting plant health. These are some examples of microorganisms in the soil that can help plant health. In just one teaspoon of soil, there are more than three times the U.S. population of these microbes in that spoonful of soil. In only one teaspoon of soil, there can be up to a billion microbes. Again. That's three times the U.S. population. Soil microbes offer the plant a variety of services, such as health promotion, stress suppression, and helping the plant acquire nutrients important for plant growth. Now it's time to answer question six. Horticulture and agriculture techniques affect soil health, sometimes negative and sometimes positive. Give an example of a good and bad technique. Please pause the video and answer this question. I hope that in your brainstorming session, 
you realize that soil is a very precious commodity. If we don't take care of our soil, we cannot continue to grow food to feed our children and also our children's children. Soil management is a puzzle that includes many different components, such as water management, nutrient input, plant growth, tillage, ground cover, and other inputs that you add to the soil. There's much more for us to cover regarding soil science. So watch the next video after you've answered these six questions to dive in deeper into soil science.